what's up guys I'm here at the worldwide headquarters of casual observations and today I'm gonna go through my Swiss Army knives what I use them for and why I like them so much so stick around and let's get to it welcome back adventurers to another adventure but this one's a different kind of adventure it's not fishing all right let's get started all kinds of cool stuff to talk about today with these Swiss Army knives Thanks for hanging around. Let's get into it and talk about them. Okay, guys, sorry about the wind, but it's a fall day here in Texas and got wind chimes going. We've got all sorts of stuff blowing around, so you'll have to forgive me for that. But it's a good day to make a video like this. Anyway, so this is a Ranger Grip 78 right here. And man, I use this all the time. I love the grip on it. And I'll show you some more about it here in just a little bit. Okay guys, so this thing cuts really well and I use it quite often if I need to make toggles or just cut wood and things like that. It's good stuff. Okay guys, so I just keep working it and working it and I do this to make uh, these stakes for a tarp. You can make them if you need them for a tent. But I just do a, a little angular cut there Oops, let me get that in front of the camera. And I just keep working it until I get the nice bite that I need so that the cord can wrap on there and stay on there. Now, one thing I did have in using a little bit softer wood is when I'd hammer this down into the ground, I would bust the top of this, I'd split it. So then what I did was I put like a piece of cloth over it, like a rag, and then I hammered it in that way and I didn't have that problem, but I lost a couple of stakes by doing that but anyway and it didn't take very long to do that and this right here this knife is perfect for it and then the other end you know you just keep working until you get the the point that you want i like mine longer so that I can get them, hammer them down in there to get a bigger bite in the soil. But, you know, you just keep working at it. This is oak right here. So, but anyway, I just wanted to show you a couple of things. How I use, you know, what I use this one for. And I'll just keep working it and working it until I get it down. But this thing works great. I mean, this this knife everything about it it's got the lock in there what do they call that the evo grip handle which i really enjoy it's good stuff okay guys so i'm here with the ranger grip 78 and i've done another video on this and i'll link it below but i love this thing i keep this in my truck but there are times I take it with me when I go fishing and camping and this thing is just a super stout Swiss Army knife. And there's all different models of them. I encourage you to go to Victorinox and check out all the different types of knives. And really, you got to find the one that's going to fit you. I like this one because it has... The Phillips, I think the 79's got the corkscrew, and I do have the climber which has a corkscrew, but for this one, I wanted the Phillips, and I know that you can use one of these other heads here as a screwdriver head that could work for Phillips or flathead, but for me, just a bona fide Phillips works great, and then with this one. I just put a little lanyard with a bead on it. I could give credit to Black Hat Bushcraft, how I learned how to make this. <laughs> but this thing is just phenomenal. And in the other video, I've got all the specs on the blade size and all the different, you know, cool things about it. But man, this, you know, you just saw how purpose of the, the saw 
and the main blade. This thing is just phenomenal. The other thing is, I got, I ordered a, a sheath for it. Because I wear this thing on my belt quite a bit. I keep it in my truck, but if I do go out, like on a hike or something, you know, I'll strap it to my belt. And there we go. It's good quality leather. I just love having the different size knives, guys. That's the thing. You don't need just to have, I mean, you don't have to have just one, although one is, will get the job done. I have different ones. All right. And this one I've used to, like I was showing you, or talking about how I make the tent stakes, tarp stakes. I had to make them for a friend of mine who forgot his tent stakes when we were camping up in Iowa. He brought his tent, but he and he thought he had his stakes with him, but he didn't have them. So I used this to carve them out. And I do have my big bushcraft knives that I use those also for things like that. But this one was just right there. And I love the this little Evo grip, I think is what they call it. And it just feels great. This knife is just perfect. All right. We'll set that one there. This one is, I'm pretty sure, is the climber. And this is the one that I used to carve. Where is he? This little guy right here. This is a pretty thick piece of, uh, I don't know what they call it, basswood. I don't know if it's quite balsa wood. But I've never really carved anything before like this. <laughs> so I worked on it like, yeah, I mean, you guys know, there's no scientific observations here. It's just casual ones. But this knife, I carry with me in the tackle box. And, you know, it's got all the cool blades on it. It's just, the thing is just perfect. The other thing I like about it is this one does have the corkscrew. And you know what I've used a corkscrew with before, and a lot of people, you know, think, well, you can have a wine bottle if you're out fishing or doing whatever. No, but there was a time, guys, <clears throat> I didn't know exactly how I was going to handle this. This one, by the way, is, I've used this to cut fishing line also, and it's, you know, it's absolutely perfect for that. It's just it's such a great knife. But with the corkscrew right here, what I did with it was I was out fishing kind of over by Tioga, Texas. And I got a whopper plopper stuck on, it was a, a tree essentially growing up uh in the water about 15 feet out it wasn't very th wasn't a very thick tree only about this big but it was dead and when I ca cast I don't know exactly what happened but, but I got the whopper plopper stuck and what I mean is I you know cast trying to get around the base of the tree to see if anything was there but the line got caught halfway up and when I reeled it pulled it up and it got hung up there so what I did was, I didn't want to lose the lure, but when I pulled, I had 20 pound braid. I realized that that log was starting to bend towards me. I was like, man, I can snap that off. So what I did was, is I cut the fishing line right at the base, and then I tied it around this. I mean, I got it all sorts of twisted up in here. And then I held it like this. I got a good grip on it like this, and I just pulled and pulled and pulled, and that braid, you know, has got some stretch to it, and sure enough, that log leaned over far enough, and I just kept the tension on it, and finally, it just, pow, it was rotted, nasty, you know, like, it was, it, it was like the, the trunk of an old tree, not a big one, but just the branches were all gone, anyway, so I snapped it, and I pulled it all the way in, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, and I pulled it all the way in, and I got the whopper plopper back, 
and you'd never, th and it took me only about 10 minutes to figure out to try to use this. I was like, man, this will get all coiled up on here. Because if you know anything about fishing braid, it'll just cut your hands clean up if you try to pull with it. All right. So this one is just such a great knife, guys. All sorts of good, good stuff with it. Can't say enough about it. All right. This one's the climber. And of course, it's got the toothpick. You know, and I've used a toothpick to punch holes into different things and uh, to take care of uh, making air holes for like night crawlers. And um, I had a bag of minnows and what I did was I poked some holes in it and I dipped it down into where I was gonna fish with some of the local creek or uh, lake water, pond water, river water could get in there slowly and mix with uh, the water that the minnows had come in. And if I've had it in a minnow bucket, I don't have to worry about it. But sometimes, you know, when you go to some of these bait shops, you get a bag of them. And anyway, but uh, so this thing comes in handy. It isn't always just for, your, you know, for your teeth. Tweezers. I've used tweezers to pick out cactus needles because I do have a bunch of cacti here, different types. Pad cactus, um, some of those buckhorn stick cacti. And so I've used them to pull out cactus needles. And I'll talk about this more in here in just a little bit. Now, the one thing is with these, or this guy right here, <clears throat> is it's small enough to carry in your pocket. So you could carry it with you all day long, and you wouldn't even know it was there. This is just a great knife. I keep this one in my tackle bag, like I was saying, my Cryptip tackle bag. And I've used it to cut line before. Where are we? Okay, guys. So I use 20 pound fluorocarbon or even 50 pound for liters when I'm fishing for big northern pike and stuff. So this thing is just, you know, if I don't want to use the main blade, I just snip. And it's that easy. And people are like, hey, when are you going to really use the scissors, man? I use them all the time. And I'll get to that here in just a minute when I talk about the, the other one. All right. This is just so phenomenal. Okay, so there's that one. Let me get the fishing line out of the way here. Let me get this back where it needs to go. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Let me get something else here. Okay, guys, the other thing is, is I've been losing weight. I think I'm down now 27 pounds. Yay me. I've had to put another notch in the belt. And so you have that little leather punch that you can stitch things with leather. Just pop that right through. But I also use just a regular tip of the knife there to just to kind of get it loosened up. So that worked really well for this. Then the other thing was with a baseball. This is going to sound nuts, but see all these stitchings right here? I started off with this one to work on getting the stitchings off. We're going to take a, a baseball that was already torn, which is going to take the cover off. And this one's scuffed up, but we're going to just work through the laces and take them off and then have them, the skin, and then see what was inside the baseball. And I started off with this blade, and then I switched to my other one, which is this classic SD right here. And I went through and picked it apart and got it. Good stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. This one, I carry in my pocket and actually my backpack. And you guys know, and if you're new to the channel, you may not know that I've been a school teacher for many, many years. And I want you to take a look at this. This 
you know, you can see how simple this is. I probably have used this more than any other knives combined at school. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go through and I'll talk to you about it. Okay. So the first thing is, when I was working at kindergarten and, and first grade, at lunchtime, the kids could not open the little bags for their carrots, apples, whatever it was. And it dawned on me one day, you know, and, and then I would pick it up and try to open it. And the kids, you know, when they're that young, their hands are slimy, they lick their fingers. And when you try to open the bag, it's already, you know, slimy, sticky or whatever. So what I did was, I was like, oh, you know what, this is easy. I'll just cut it with the, the Swiss Army knife. And the kids loved it when you, you know, pulled this out and and I'd cut the their bag open for them. And it got to the point where even if they knew they could open it, they still wanted me to come by and trim that to cut it. But I've used this for all kinds of crafts. <clears throat> In the classroom, I've had to use it to cut bulletin board stuff, yarn, uh, more fishing line when I hang things from the ceiling. I've used this for projects like uh, building Native American camps, and we had to trim some little branches on a little uh, wiki up or like on a teepee, cutting the, you know, the stitching on that. So I've used this quite a bit in the classroom for all kinds of stuff, cutting things out that we're going to glue on uh, to make charts and things. So this one has come in really handy. All right. Let's take a look at these. This one right here, the file. I've used the file not only for just myself, but I've used it to file down... Uh, when you clip parts out of out of um, plastic bases and it leaves like a little tab there, I've used these to uh, shave down, to smooth out um, zip ties. <clears throat> I've used this to file down uh, all sorts of different things. Um, when it came to fishing, if I need to smooth something out, or in the classroom. Uh, when you're working with little pieces of wood for, you know, building things like when you rebuilt the Alamo, replicas of the Alamo, and there's a palisade fence. So this I used to help file the bottoms down so the kids could glue them in place to make a fence. So this comes in handy. And also it's got your little screwdriver tip. But this guy right here, you can also use to pull up tabs that hold like batteries down. There's just a million things you can use this for. Now this tip, and of course the blade, the blade I've used to open envelopes to, uh, to, I mean, just all kinds of things. Cut string. We had a kid that got a backpack that was all stuck and he couldn't unzip it. And so I was cutting uh, some of the, the, the string and cord that's in there. And I was also using the scissors. But this guy in a classroom is just both of them. I've used them to it's just so valuable to pop staples out of uh, packets. Now, as a teacher, I didn't like to get very many packets because I hated doing packets when I was a kid. So, like, if we had a review, uh, we had a semester test coming up with 100 questions, and the review may have four, three or four pages stapled, then, you know, that's about the extent of my packets. But, you know, if a kid was working on a project and they needed to keep a portion of their sheet or reprint something, use this to pop the staples out and then print a new one and then restaple it. At the end of the year on my wall where I have all kinds of posters and things pinned up, I'd use this and just go through and just pop those staples one right after another. I really like this tip right here the best though for that. This one just pop, 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 go through and get the staples out. And this one you can even keep on your key ring. It's so lightweight. I don't have the specifics of it, but man, it's just a, a great thing to have. The other thing is, it was pure luck one day. I had this one with me at school. This one in my pocket, and this one was in my backpack. <clears throat> and I know people freak out. Oh, you can't have blades and things at school. Well, for a teacher that's doing all sorts of stuff, they don't mind if you have a Swiss Army knife. But... 
this guy right here saved the day for me one time. There was a kid that had his locker was stuck. It was a top locker, and we could. It, it wasn't these kind of lockers where they already had the built-in combination lock. These you could put whatever lock you wanted on there. You could put a you know a key lock. You could do a combination lock. <laughs> but to open the locker, you'd lift up the handle. It was a perfectly set trigger for it. You just lift up and pop. It would open, and then you could swing it open. Well, we could push it up, and it was ready to open. We just could not open it. So then what I did was, is about halfway up, I shoved this in the crease of the locker, and I pried it, so I loosened it a little bit, right around where that latch was, like maybe an inch above it. Then all the way at the very top of the locker is where things were stuck, because I could get the bottom up to that latch and a little past the latch open. So then I stuck this in there, and I just pried and pried, and then I got my fingers in there, and I just yanked it, and I got the locker open. So this was a, a big deal right here to be able to, to get this open. And thank goodness I had it with me. And this one right here, I need to make a little lanyard for. I just hadn't done that yet. Kind of like this one. All right. And of course the tweezers. Uh, one thing I used the tweezers for was we had cut out a bunch of um, traits about the different Native American camps. Let's say like the Karankawa, the Karankawa, the Tonkawa, or Tonkawa, depending on how you want to pronounce it. But And they had to match the type of structure they lived in with the tribe. So they had to cut them out. And I had one student that did have um, some issues with being able to to grip and get things glued where they needed to be. And so I helped them out. So they did the gluing. They got the glue on the the paper. But my fingers are like stubs, you can see that, fat, chubby, and they don't work very well from playing lots of baseball and football. And <laughs> Anyway, so what I did was I grabbed the corner. This one was a teepee. I grabbed the very tip, tip corner of it, and I put it right under the little spot where it needed to go for the Comanche tribe. And then we did that with all the other ones. And so it worked out pretty cool to have uh, the tweezers to do that. Then this, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> this main blade again, I had to use it to kind of carve a little bit on a mousetrap car as the kids for science were building these, uh, mouse, the, the basis of the, the energy of the power of the, the car was the mousetrap and it would, when it would snap, it would pull a string and then that's what would cause the car to go. And I had one that was was getting hung up on a piece of wood. They had the base was a block of wood and there was some friction in there with the wheels. So I had this and I shaved it down just a little bit to smooth that out. And then I used the file to smooth it down also. And so I've used this thing for all kinds of stuff at school. I mean, tons of different things. And, uh, you know, it's just, and it goes on and on, all of these. So many different things you can use them for. But uh, if you haven't tried this little Evo Grip stuff, oh man, you got to do it. You got to go for it. Now these come in different kind, different colors. You know, these, I don't know what they call these plates or skins. I like the traditional red. Now they do have some cool camouflage ones and some woodland ones. And I'm kind of like, well, I don't know about that. And they do have some bushcraft or what they call outdoor stuff. But for me... These right here will get the job done. They're absolutely perfect. Okay, guys. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to run through that. <clears throat> tell you all about them. What I use them for. I know I didn't get into specifics for, you know, if it's, you know, whatever the millimeter size is and all that. I think, you know, they got 111 millimeters and uh, all these different things. I just wanted to go through and tell you what I use them for. And for the most part, anything outdoor, for sure fishing and in the classroom if you're a school teacher. All right. The other thing I want to do is I want to get over to Switzerland there and tour the Victorinox uh, plant, the factory. You know, I've lived in Europe for two years. I lived in Spain for two years in Seville. 
Spain, and it's in the province of Andalusia. Sevilla FC, yes, I follow that football team or soccer team. They're doing pretty well this year. I think they're actually above Barcelona and Real Madrid. <laughs> but anyway, so I lived in Spain. I've been over to Portugal and then spent some time over in England, you know, in London, went to Liverpool. I kind of uh, also like uh, Liverpool, the soccer or football team, and then Everton. And then we went to um, up to York, toured around through there, but also went over to Wales and toured Carnarvon Castle. But that's pretty much it. I want to go see the rest of Europe, and I want to be able to tour, you know, the factory where they make these things. And don't worry, I'm going to tell them, and they already know that people use these for all sorts of stuff, but as much of a chatterbox as I am, I'm going to tell them all about how I use this in my classroom. <laughs> anyway, uh... <laughs> Oh, man. All right, I think that's about it. Oh, this one I've used to even carve a pumpkin for or Halloween, you know, a jack-o'-lantern. And I've used this one to modify Christmas trees. So if you're thinking of holiday uses for Thanksgiving, uh, hanging decorations and things like that. You know, there's, man, there's just so many uses for these. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up. Hey, and thanks for stopping by. And to my international friends that are out there, no matter where you are in the world, thanks for stopping by. New members to the channel, hey, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate the support. Anybody that's here, thank you for the support. Friends, family, whoever you are, it's nice to meet you, uh, especially those that are in other parts of the world. Thanks for stopping in. I do mostly fishing videos because I like to get out in the outdoors, but sometimes I'll do videos of like, points of interest or just stuff and uh, so this definitely <laughs> qualifies as stuff but um like I was saying before none of this is scientific I just you know it's just me making helpful videos I don't do it professionally I do it for fun and uh, you know seriously there are no scientific observations just casual ones about anything and everything and sometimes I'll go off on tangents and talk about all kinds of different things. And, but that's what makes it fun. You know, I enjoy the, being able to do that on the channel. All right, guys. So this is pretty much my little collection. Am I going to expand? I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if I do that or not. I've had people ask if they want to, if they can send me things to test out and to use. I'm thinking about that. Uh, we'll see. My email is... Um, in the description box up there in the about portion of the channel you can always email me and you can get my address that way if you want to send something for me to check out or test out but I don't have a P.O. box or anything like that I should probably get one but um, for now everything is just through email but uh, you can always let me know what you think about any of the Swiss Army knives or these in particular tell me about them because there's some that I haven't even tried yet I don't know anything about so if you can tell me about them I may order one like if there's another one that's good for I know there's like the trekker and then there's you know all sorts of them but uh, you know I may start a little collection here I have these three so far so maybe I can add some other ones and kind of tinker with them all right guys so thanks for hanging out with me today and uh you know, hope you're having a great fall and everything's going well with all your blades that you're testing, your knives, bushcraft knives, cutlery knives at home in the kitchen, Swiss Army knives, or whatever you use these things for. I hope that everything's going well for you. All right. Until next time, my friends, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, just one more thing. With the holidays coming up, these are going to make great gifts. The other thing is, if you got like maybe a birthday, a graduation, or somebody's retirement, these are going to make great gifts for that. They have so many different sizes, colors, uh, additions. There's just a huge variety that you're going to find something in there. They even have stuff for the house, cutlery items for the kitchen. So go to uh, the Victorinox web website, cruise through there, see what they've got, or maybe just get on Amazon and go through and see what they've got. But these make great gifts.